Well, before we move back to Jean-Paul, it's time to wrap up the search. We are covering Legend of the Dark Knight issues 59 through 61. These issues are written by the legendary Denny O'Neill with colors by Digital Chameleon, lettering by Willie Schubert, and are edited by Archie Goodwin and Jim Spivey. Uh, Art-wise, issue 59 has pencils by Ron Wagner and inks by Ron McCain, and issues 60 and 61 have art, both pencils and inks, by Eduardo Barreto. We open on a doctor berating Bruce Wayne for running around all over the world instead of, you know, staying home and recuperating after a major back injury. Bruce is not deterred from his current course of action, especially after the deaths in Monkley. Elsewhere, Benedict Asp has lost his leverage over Dr. Chandra Quinsolving after Jack Drake was rescued, so he tries drugs instead. Dr. Kinsolving tries to escape, sending her foster brother to Dick Kick City in the process, but is stopped by Asp's Russian partner. After he retrieves Dr. Kinsolving so he can drug her, Asp then asks the Russian if he would deal with another little troublesome individual, Sir Hemingford Gray. At the flat that Wayne has rented as Gray, Wayne explains to Alfred that he's keeping the Gray persona up. Basically, Wayne's own public-facing persona is too high-profile as Bruce Wayne, and that would attract attention to him personally outside of any attention that Asp might have now that he's aware that Gray is coming after him. As Wayne talks to Tim about Dr. Kinsolving's background over the phone, he spots some goons coming to kill them, that is, Wayne and Alfred, led by the Russian. They has fight, and Bruce ultimately gets the upper hand. In particular, there's a great bit where Asp's Russian goon throws a knife at Bruce, as Gray, who deflects it, catches it, and throws it back at the goon in such a way that the handle hits him in the head with enough force to knock him out. That's the kind of thing where when your target manages to pull that off, you refund the deposit and refer your client to Deathstroke or Deadshot. In any case, this leads to Bruce and Alfred returning to the U.S. to investigate the home and family that adopted both Asp and Dr. Kinsolving. The intercut between Asp and Kinsolving, with Asp using drugs to break down Kinsolving's resistance to murder, and the foster mother of the two being interviewed by Bruce, where we learn that they were adopted by a pastor who was a domestic abuser and a racist, and who the two's foster mother suggests adopted Chandra so that he could have a child he could feel good about beating. Eventually, Asp and Chandra, in addition to learning that they could use their powers to heal, would also allow them to kill at a distance and without trace, which in turn let them kill their abusive father before both ran away. The, their mother, or adoptive mother, says that she did not intervene to stop the abuse because it's implied she did not feel that she could do so, perhaps with, the, with her having also been abused in the pro process. The mother is aware of Chandra's powers, at least, and has received a postcard from Chandra after she graduated from med school, at which point she changed her name, where she mentioned that she had not used her powers since. And then Bruce and Alfred don't get much more information out of the foster mother, as Asp manages to finally break through Kinsolving's defenses, and the two of them kill their last remaining foster parent. We continue with Bruce getting a briefing from Tim as to what Asp has been up to since childhood, as Bruce and Alfred return to Gotham. During this, Asp tries to use Dr. Kinsolving to murder Gray, but it doesn't quite work, though Bruce does take a bit of a psychic hit. Bruce is checked in at Gotham General for a checkup, where they see on the news that Asp, through a pseudonym, is extorting the governments of central country, several countries, taking credit for the deaths in Monkley and the death of Hemingford Gray. The doctor at Gotham General once again says that Bruce should stop running around. It's doing his spine dirt, and he needs to get some bed rest for a while before starting any sort of physical therapy or, or activity. When Bruce ex insists that he needs to act on this, Alfred resigns. Alfred takes a cab to Wayne Manor, where he then proceeds, persuades John Paul to keep an eye on Bruce. A cobweb. Disgraceful. Dust. Bob Barrett. What do you want? I asked you a question. I came looking for you. You found me. May I ask you to remove the mask and to speak with your normal voice? Okay. I have come to ask for your help. 
For yourself or for him? Well, Mr. Wayne, listen, he quit. I'm the Batman now. Yes, precisely. You are the Batman. And he needs the Batman. Bruce Wayne needs me? Someone very powerful will try to kill him soon. He refuses to take precautions. His only hope is for you to watch over him and intervene when it becomes necessary. Not interested. Sorry, Mr. Pennyworth. I could appeal, appeal to your vanity. I could tell you that Mr. Wayne's enemy could be the most dangerous criminal on earth and that to capture him would be a splendid feather in your cap. Yes. But I shall not. Instead, I ask a simple question. Are you what you claim to be? Are you the Batman? Don't doubt it for a second. And would the Batman refuse to help someone in mortal danger? Would the Batman condone murder? Would he, Jean-Paul? Tell me. Mr. Wayne is a patient at Gotham General Hospital. If he's not there... You might look for Sir Hemingford Gray. Batman should require no more information than that. Let's stick a pin in this. I'm going to get back to this later. Elsewhere, in Gotham, Bruce makes his presence known as Gray in a big, flashy way to make headlines, forcing Asp to send men to capture him. That what night, Wayne, in disguise as Gray, waits for Asp's men after sending a digital dead drop recording to Robin on a delay. And, for good measure, he hires a decoy to pose as Wayne to draw off as Bat and to make sure the kidnapping is successful. The final issue of this arc opens with as Bat interrogating Wayne's decoy. It intended to be clear to the reader that Wayne suspected that Alfred would go to Jean-Paul and did this to keep Jean-Paul from screwing up his plan. Somewhere in the Caribbean, presumably Santa Prisca, Bruce has come to and is interrogated by Asp over how he survived. Bruce uses this opportunity to get Asp to let slip how his attack works. Asp doses Chantra to get her to use the weapon again, as Bruce drops the gray voice to urge her to fight it, and in turn causing her to get flashes of Bruce, of Sir Hemingford Gray, and of Batman. Now, I don't recall if Chandra has actually encountered Batman before this, but it's interesting that she draws his connection. In Gotham, Gordon calls Robin to the GCPD, where he reveals that he knows there's been a change of Batman, that the original was on Sir Hemingford Gray's boat, and that they're in Santa Prisca so he can't help them, both for uh, legal jurisdictional reasons and also because there's a hurricane coming in. It feels from this dialogue that he's one piece of information away from figuring out that Bruce Wayne is Batman though it's also possible that he may have already figured it out at this point, maybe. Speaking of which, in Santa Prisca, Wayne comes to and goes out of the room where he was held, using some knockout gas in his chair to take out a guard. He finds Chandra, who is in a partially mentally regressed state because of the drugs. They talk, with Asp listening in on the bug. Chandra reveals that she knows Bruce is, or was, Batman, and that being forced to kill is taking a lot out of her mentally. At this, Asp and his goon come in to force Chandra to kill Bruce. They, at Bruce, Asp, Chandra, and Asp's goon, has fight. Ultimately, Bruce manages to stick Asp with his own drugs, and Chandra manages to turn her brother's power back on himself, killing him with Asp's goon fleeing into the night. As, a trop as the tropical storm hurricane, it's a little ambiguous, racks the island, Chandra, over the course of the night, uses her powers to heal Bruce's injuries completely. In an epilogue, Bruce, now able to walk, tells Tim about buying a house with caretakers and a well-funded trust to make sure that Dr. Kinsolving, now mentally regressed to childhood and no longer remembering Bruce Wayne being Batman, is well taken care of. I understand why when the Nightfall Saga was adapted loosely into the what, what would be the Dark Knight Rises. People assumed that 
Bruce regaining his strength and physical ability through the use of a Lazarus pit was what happened in the comics and with the prison being a surrogate for that. Because it's a resolute, because Bruce regaining his strength through a Lazarus pit is a resolution that doesn't involve some manner of fridging one of Bruce's love interests. I do, do wonder if given sufficient time and without the impending massive zero hour, they would have had Rachel Ghoul introduced into the story to restore the man who Ray's would have succeed him whether he wants to or not. Because, like, in all seriousness, every discussion I'd seen of the Nightfall saga before this, um, and by before, I mean before I did this this project, that everyone said, oh, yeah, he got his ability to walk back through a Lazarus pit with like a almost Mandela effect or de degree of regularity. There was no mention ever of Dr. Kin solving at all. It's like the G didn't exist. And when my previous exposure to the story well, well before this project through advertisements in comics and also reading the junior novelization by Alan Grant, um, I could have swore like that one also featured Dr. Kin solving. And so I wondered if Dr. Kin Solving has, was a character who was original to that junior novelization rather than having to get into the whole issue of, of Rachel Ghoul and his history with Batman. So I was I'm almost surprised to see that Lazarus Pit never come up here at all, but not that surprised. That said, this isn't as satisfying a conclusion to the story as I like. Again, with doc the fridging of Dr. Kin solving, with mentally regressing her to the point where she is no longer able to be a part of Batman's story, part of Bruce Wayne's story, and the depowering of her serving to eliminate a supporting character who knows Bruce's secret and reinstate the status quo of Bruce not having a love interest. That said... This is foreshadowed somewhat well with the hints of the toll that the repeated use of Dr. Kinsolving's power has taken on her when used with such regularity and frequent and frequency in terms of what it is being used for. And the use of the power here is done on her own volition, both in the sense of her killing her brother to stop him from killing others and with the heavy usage to heal Bruce. It's still a problematic ending, but it's one that narratively makes sense to a degree. I don't like it, but I understand why it's here. Next time, speaking of problematic, we're going to return to Jean-Paul and with the introduction of Avatar. Thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed the show, please like and subscribe, and also consider backing my Patreon. Patreon backers get episodes up to one week early of this show and any f future Let's Plays. Also, please consider backing my coffee. Uh, toss me a few bucks, also helps support the show, and it's not a monthly obligation or anything like that.